Uh, you would think that I'd start with Grayson, but I'm actually going to start with a quick personal story first. Yesterday, I'm moving, uh, and we hired movers, of course. It's, it's a two-bedroom. It's at large. I'm too old. Jesus like, oh, you know, you just grab a couple of friends. Look <laughs> at my friends. They're now all, honestly, they're all around 40, right? I'm going to go tell Michael, sure, come on, let's move some cash. He's like, oh, look, oh, please, 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 please. He's like, he'd be like, look, look, I'll pay for the movers. <laughs> so we, I can't go in that direction, right? So, of course, but you know how I roll, right? So I try to get uh, the cheapest possible. And we did. We came close. Um, one of the lowest rates around. And uh, they sent three guys. Uh, they're supposed to show up at 7 in the morning. Of course, they show up at 9.15. Whatever. I mean, look, they're movers. We're just lucky they're there, right? And I, I've got a lot of issues with movers. But anyway, look, these guys, they weren't bad. They weren't bad. Uh, they show up. They start working. And they're working pretty hard. One of the guys has uh, tattoos all over his body. First of all, let's be clear. All three guys have tattoos all over their bodies, right? Uh, but one of them has it up to his neck. Now, we've discussed this before on the show. I'm a little scared of dudes with tattoos on their necks. Because other body parts, I hear you, it's normal. Everybody's got tattoos these days, right? I don't happen to have them, but I, you know, JR thinks that I'm prejudiced against guys with tattoos, right? I'm not. But when it comes up to your neck, I'm like, Tim, there's something going on there that I'm a little uncomfortable with, right or wrong, okay? So, uh, but I think, hey, you know what? Jank, be a good. Be a good lib, don't be prejudiced. Okay, so I said, okay. And it turns out he's a lovely guy. He's a nice guy, man. We talk about he grew up in Huntington Beach, he surfs a lot, etc. And then I noticed at one point in the day, I said, wait a minute now, does he have something on his... Oh, that's a teardrop. Okay. Now, for those of you who don't know, a teardrop means you kill somebody if you get a tattoo here. Now, he's as white as white gets, you're about to tell him the story. Uh, I thought it was a Hispanic thing mainly, but apparently not, though. Apparently everybody's getting teardrops. Okay. So I was like, oh, okay, let's be cool. Uh, at uh, one point, uh, Wendy was saying something. I was like, yeah, be, be cool, be cool. The guy has a teardrop. <laughs> okay, let's just move on with our lives. All right, anyway, but he's, look, he was a swell guy. There was nothing wrong with him at all. We were having perfectly lovely conversations throughout the day as we're moving, etc. I'm still keeping an open mind. And then at one point, we're in the elevator together, just me and him, and he does this and leans up against the elevator, right? And so I see uh, one of his, so he's got tattoos all up in here. I see this one, there's a giant one right here. Okay, you want to know what it was? Swastika. I was like, and then I look at him, and I was like, oh, uh, he's, you know, no hair, white guy. And I was like, ooh. Yeah, yeah, that's unfortunate. Okay. Now, here's the thing. At that point, you know me, I'm dying to know if he's reformed, right? I mean, is he, well, he was a neo-Nazi, and that's when he got it, and it was stupid. But look, he's, doing move, he's a mover now, working hard for, you know, an honest pay, etc. cetera. Uh, maybe he's an ex-con. Maybe he uh, had some alcohol issues. I don't know. I'm making stuff up in my head, right? Uh, but I want him to be better. Uh, now, the real question is, did I ask him? I think that if you know me, you're thinking, he asked him, right? I did not ask. Okay, you know why? Here's what I'm not interested in. Trouble. Okay, so I, I pulled the J.R. Jackson. You know what? Not interested in that. I'm going to walk away from that kind of trouble. Because look, what's the best case scenario? He's a former neo-Nazi, right? Here I am, Turkish guy, you know, born Muslim. Uh, my wife is Asian. He knows where we live. I see, you know, he seems like a swell guy. <laughs> Look, if he's a swell former Nazi or a swell current Nazi, better I don't find out either way. <laughs> okay, so let's just avoid that conversation. But one little thing that I did do, though, is we moved into a place that has just swarming with Indians, okay? <laughs> As in, you know, South Asians. And our next door neighbor happens to be Indian in, in this uh, complex. And the, the, there's a whole family, but the grandma was there. And she says, uh, she says, so where are you guys from, to Wendy and I? Now, Wendy's from Taiwan. I'm originally, of course, as you know, from Turkey. Uh, and she, she's like, let me guess. I was like, mm -hmm. I was thinking, good luck, but okay, let's see what you got. She's like, you are Koreans. Uh, I was like, no, no, we're not Koreans. She's like, but she really looks Korean. I'm like, I know, but she's Taiwanese. And she, I said, well, he, she said, where are you from? I said, I'm originally from Turkey. She's like, but those aren't the same place. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> She's like, I am very confused. <laughs>
And I, I know the, the neo-Nazi or ex-neo-Nazi guys in the back, right? So I was like, well, you know, uh, it's America. That's what happens in America. You know, people of different races getting together. It's a great thing. <laughs> so then, look, I want to be a good guy, right? They worked hard all day long. They uh, moved everything, et cetera, et cetera. It was a hard move. And then at the end, you're supposed to tip them, right? And then I went to go tip, and I was like, am I giving extra money now? to a neo-Nazi or whatever. Because if he's ex-neo-Nazi, who cares? Okay, yeah, not, I mean, I don't mean who cares. I just mean like, okay, we get, believe in second chances in America. I argued for Michael Vick's second chance, right? And so I'm gonna, and I'm gonna argue for this guy who's working hard, et cetera, et cetera. And then I was like, look, what am I gonna do? Like, take his tattoo into account? No, I gotta give him the tip I normally would have. So I gave him, a, for me especially, a pretty damn good tip. And then I was like, I don't know. Uh, but I think, I, I, I don't think I should take that into account. Yeah, I shouldn't take that into account, right? Give the guy a good tip no matter what. Well, you mean, should you give him more because? Not more, no. <laughs> what am I going to reward the guy? No, I'm just That's saying. That's what I was trying to figure out. No, no, no. Uh, it's, the question is, should I have given him less? No. No, no, right? Not at all. No, I'm totally with you. All right, so I feel like I handled that all right. But one last thing on where I moved to. I heard Ben talked about this a little bit yesterday on the show. Uh, and now people are guessing where it is. So just calm down. You don't have to guess. But let's put it this way, okay? Um, I, I moved in, and the place is, like I said, full of South Asians, of Indian, okay? And then other uh, Fabi immigrants, okay? Now, look, I came over on the same boat. Don't get me wrong, okay? If you don't know, Fab means fresh off the boat, okay? So uh, a lot of people with accents, et cetera. And well, you know what's the first thing I thought? You got a good deal. Because here's what Indians are interested in. Value. <laughs> okay. Here's what the Indians in this country are not going to do. Overpay. <laughs> now, look, I, as you know, I have a billion Indian friends. I have uh, immunity here. And the Indian, my Indian friends would be the first ones to tell you that. So as soon as I saw a bunch of Indian families around, I was like, we got a good deal. <laughs> It's a, it's a fascinating place. But anyway, all right, so that's my move. It was a lot of fun. Now, are you all ready for Alan Grayson? Should we take a quick break first? I'm so pumped up about this. All right, let's take a quick break, okay? Then I'll give you the whole Grayson story, including his appearance on CNN, which was awesome. Okay, Young Turk. <laughs> all right, back on the Young Turks. Now, let's let him have it. Here comes Alan Grayson from behind. Oh, no, he hits him with a chair. He hits him with a chair. Uh, you, you know by now, I hope, uh, what Alan Grayson has said. Uh, he talked about how uh, Americans, uh, the Republicans want uh, sick people to die. D-I-E, die, as Oral Roberts said. And that uh, if they're going to die, that he needs uh, the Republicans want him to die quickly. Um, and state people have been calling for an apology. And he said, "I apologize to the dead people for the near Holocaust that has happened here in terms of uh, the fact that we have not been able to fix health care and all the people who died uh, while we have not been able to fix health care." Now we have those clips for you guys in just a second. And then he goes on CNN, and they're like, "Well, you know." Uh, this sounds inflammatory. He's like, oh, you want more of where that came from, big guy? How about their knuckle-dragging Neanderthals? How you like me now? Okay. And, Alan, I like you a lot, man. I really do. Here's looking at you, kid. Here's why. It's about damn time that a Democrat hit a Republican over the head with a chair. Proverbially, politically, bring it down. Don't actually pick up any chairs. Okay, now. Republicans are like, no, how could you do this? It hurts so much. We need you to apologize. Now, you didn't want Joe Wilson to apologize when he called the president a liar uh, in the House, first time it's ever happened, it, to his face, right, in American history. You didn't want that, right? Um, but Republicans have never said that they want, uh, that the Democrats are looking to kill people, have they? No, they haven't said that, right? Wait, hold on now. Let me see down. Do I have any quote? Huh, look at this. Representative Ginny Brown from uh, Republican of Florida. 
She said in July, quote, last week, Democrats released a health care bill which essentially said to American seniors, drop dead. How dare you? I want an apology and a censure. Uh, well, that must be the only one, right? Oh, how about Representative uh, Paul Brown from uh, Georgia? Uh, he said that he reviewed the public health insurance option in July and diagnosed that it was going to, quote, kill people. Democrats are going to kill people with the public health option. I don't remember the Republicans or anyone asking for an apology. I don't remember the media talking about it at all. Do you remember that quote? Do anybody remember any of these quotes? I got more. Representative Virginia Fox, a Republican of North Carolina, said that Congress uh, wants to make sure we bring down the cost of health care for all Americans and that ensures affordable access for all Americans and is pro-life. Uh, I'm sorry, that her uh, position would be that. Uh, and it's pro-life because it will not put seniors in a position of being put to death by their government. Seniors being put to death. Wait, that reminds me. Wait, didn't they talk about something about a death panel that Obama and the Democrats want to do? How they're going to pull the plug on grandma? But now when a Democrat says something, all of a sudden he's got to apologize? I'm, I'm with Alan Grayson when he said, yeah, hell no. Okay. Look, I'm not done yet. Let me give you a couple more quotes, and then I can come back with G Grayson with another great quote. So uh, here we go. One last, uh, no, two last ones. Louis uh, Gohmert from uh, Texas. That's awesome. Republican named Gohmert. Uh, one in five people have to die because they want socialized. They want to socialize medicine. I would hate to think that among five women, one of them is going to die because we go to socialized care. Hey, you want another one? All right, one last one. Uh, Representative Steve King from Iowa. He said they're going to save money by rationing care getting you in a long line. Places like Canada, United Kingdom, and Europe, people die when they're in line. Okay, so Republicans have said it ad nauseum. No one has ever asked for an apology. Uh, Republicans or Democrats or the media, it's never even been an issue because that's what Republicans do all the time. They hit de Democrats below the belt, above the head, in every way possible. But if a Democrat ever dares to strike back, get on your hands and knees, bow your head, right? And Grayson said, yeah, that's interesting. Here's what I'm not going to do, bow my head. Here's what I'm going to say instead. Now, I love these. You ready? I'm not taking any of it back. I stand by what I said. But here's my favorite quote. This has got to go in Young Turks Hall of Fame. I think we should be on the offense, not the defense. And that's where I plan to stay. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? <laughs> This is Sparta! And then he had a culinary piece of advice. Tonight, we die in hell! Let's go get him, Grayson! Let's go get him. Okay. Now, look, I'm going to say something funny here. If Alan Grayson was the first guy to do this, if I hadn't just given you all those Republican quotes and we haven't been living the last 30 years where the Republicans attack, attack, attack in the most unfair ways, if we hadn't just gone through health care reform where they have not made one substantive uh, you know, attempt at reforming the legislation, but instead uh, viciously attack with smears and lies. I'd say, you know what? What Grayson did was actually a little uncool, and I'll tell you why. Because here's the thing: government makes decisions on life and death all the time. Uh, healthcare is one of those things. Based on the legislation that they passed or did not pass, people are going to live or die. And you know, there's a study by a Harvard scientist that Alan Grayson quotes, where 47,000 people die in America every year. Uh, because they don't have access to health insurance. Now, so it is a matter of life and death, right? And, of course, Congress and the President makes decisions on war, where people live and die. So if, based on those decisions, we constantly call the other side, who we think are making the wrong decisions on life and death, killers, we could. We could say they kill people, that they're murderers, that they uh, are, want people to die, right? Both sides can do that ad nauseum, and I don't think it helps the debate, okay? But so if, if we were in a vacuum, I actually wouldn't be in favor of Grayson's comment. But we're not in a vacuum. We're in a, a, a context where the Republicans do it a million times over. And it is successful. They drive the polls, and, and, and they get the American people to believe things that are not true, based on their constant attacks. And then on the other side, you hardly have any defense at all, let alone any offense. When's the last time you saw a Democrat go on the offense? So in that context, when Grayson says, hey, you know what? I, I plan to go on the offense and stay there. I say, 
About damn time, man. About damn time. So, now, having set that all up for you, let's go back and have a fun with all these clips. I love his stuff on CNN, but in case you didn't see it, I'm going to set the whole thing up for you guys. I want to uh, have you watch the original comments first, and then his non-apology, the ap I apologize to the dead comment, which was great, and then the CNN clip. So let's go to clip number one here. What did he say originally? Let's watch. Here it is. The Republicans' health care plan for America, don't get sick. That's right, don't get sick. If you have insurance, don't get sick. If you don't have insurance, don't get sick. If you're sick, don't get sick. Just don't get sick. That's what the Republicans have in mind for you, America. That's the Republicans' health care plan. But I think that the Republicans understand that that plan isn't always going to work. It's not a foolproof plan. So the Republicans have a backup plan in case you do get sick. If you get sick in America, this is what the Republicans want you to do. If you get sick, America... The Republican health care plan is this. Die quickly. That's right. The Republicans want you to die quickly if you get sick. Now, the Democrats have a different plan. The Democrats say that if you have health insurance, we're going to make it better. If you don't have health insurance, we're going to provide it to you. If you can't afford health insurance, then we'll help you to afford health insurance. So America gets to decide. Do you want the Democratic plan or do you want the Republican plan? Remember, the Republican plan, don't get sick. And if you do get sick, die quickly. And then he added this, I don't know why it was not included on C-SPAN, but he did say this. And they D-I-E, they die. <laughs> I love that old Oral Roberts clip. All right, now, look, here's the thing. One thing uh, that I wish he had done was explain why uh, he's saying that they want him to die quickly. Now, in, eventually, in one of his statements, he uh, explained it a little bit, but I wish he would emphasize that. Uh, because it, there's a reason why he's saying it. Yes, you have the pre-existing conditions. Yes, they'll do the rescission so they won't cover your, uh, you know, costs uh, if you uh, wind up getting sick because they say, oh, you did a typo or whatever it is. Now, it's not technically a typo, but you filled out any kind of uh, form wrong and you didn't say that you had acne, so we're not covering your breast cancer, as we've talked about in the past. So now when they do that, sometimes they know, hey, you know what? Um, this, our position is ridiculous, it's not going to stand up, and it doesn't stand up, eventually it gets reversed sometimes, and people have to go to court to get those decisions reversed. But if you die in the meanwhile, well, they just saved a lot of money. Okay, So that's part of the reason that they want you to die quickly, the health insurance companies. But a second one, an even better one, is they have lifetime caps. So it, once you've breached your lifetime cap, they're like, you got to go, son. You got to go, okay? You got to die quickly. You got to get out of here uh, because it, you don't want to hit that lifetime cap because they don't want you to go over and spend more. If you keep, and if you keep sticking around and keep living, it's not helping their plans. Now, why are the Republicans responsible for these health insurance uh, uh, industry practices? Because they defend them tooth and nail. I, a little bit later in the program, I'm going to give you a story about how Grassley is uh, pro proposing an amendment to make sure that we take seven billion dollars from the poor and give it to the health care companies. You think I'm exaggerating. I'm not. Okay, that is literally his plan. Okay, so those guys have, are doing everything they can, as Grayson says over and over, to make sure health care reform doesn't happen so that these industries can keep doing exactly what they've been doing, getting people to die quickly. And plus, let's be honest, and Grayson says it too, it's not like he came up there to make an excellent substantive point. He was doing it tongue in cheek. But, you know, he says if people are going to take it seriously, let's do it. Let's bring it. Okay, because I'm right here. So let's go to clip number two. When they asked him to apologize, he came up and gave this speech instead. Last night here in this chamber, I gave a speech. Uh, I'm not going to recount every single thing that I said, but I will point out that immediately after that speech, several Republicans asked me to apologize. Well, I would like to apologize. I would like to apologize to the dead, and here's why. According to this study, health insurance and mortality in U.S. adults, which was published two weeks ago, 44,789 Americans die every year because they have no health insurance. That's right, 44,789 Americans die every year, according to this Harvard study called Health Insurance and Mortality in U.S. Adults. You can see it by going to our website. Grayson.house.gov. That is more than 10 times the number of Americans who've died in the war in Iraq. It's more than 10 times the number of Americans who died in 
But that was just once. This is every single year. That's right, every single year. Take a look at this. Read it and weep. And I mean that. Read it and weep. Because of all these Americans who are dying because they don't have health insurance. Now, I think we should do something about that. And the Democratic health care plan does do something about that. It makes health care affordable for those who can't afford insurance. And it saves these people's lives. Let's remember that we should care about people even after they're born. Look, does it get a better sound bite than, I apologize to the dead? <laughs> Look, this guy knows what he's doing. He knows how to go, go on the offense. When we get to the CNN clips, I'm going to explain to you how he's all of a sudden changed the conversation in a, in a way that is definitely positive. Okay, so we'll get to that in a second. But in the meanwhile, of course, Republicans demanding the apologies. Here's uh, uh, Representative Jimmy Duncan from Tennessee. That is about the most mean-spirited partisan statement that I've ever heard on this floor. And I, for one, don't appreciate it. Now, I read you all those quotes of the Republicans saying that their Democratic plan is going to kill people over and over again. And we talked about the death penalty. But let's also not forget Trent Franks. Just a couple of days ago, a Republican of Arizona said that Obama was an enemy of humanity. And let me give you a quick other quote of that speech. He said that he's sending taxpayers' money overseas, Obama is, to pay for the killing of unborn children in other countries. The president is a baby killer, okay? And he's spending your money to kill the unborn children all across the world. You said the Republicans want people to die quickly? You want to apologize? What's the matter with you? Are you kidding me, man? Are you kidding me? Here's another aggrieved Republican, Marsha Blackburn. It's fully appropriate that the gentleman return to the floor and apologize. And you know what Nancy Pelosi said? She said, uh, he will apologize, and we will ask for his apology, when everyone apologizes. When all of you Republicans, and now I'm filling this in, she should have said this better. Okay, the first part is a quote. The second part is, look, when every single one of you, all the Republicans I read to you just now, and Trent Franks, and everybody comes out here, and Sarah Palin and Michelle Bachman, and we say, we're so sorry for lying about how you're going to kill people. We apologize, okay, from the bottom of our hearts. You think they're going to do that? When's the last time they apologized for anything, let alone the specific lies that they have about how the Democratic plan is going to kill people? Please, in this debate. All right, now we go to, if all of this wasn't enough, Alan Grace is going to go on CNN, and they're going to ask him, hey, wait a minute now, isn't what you did a little unfair? But if that's not, you know, <laughs> if, if Wolf Blitzer coming at him is not enough, and I assure you it's not enough, <laughs> they put him on a panel with three other Republicans, okay? And he's like, oh, really? Let's do it. <laughs> okay, so here's clip number one. Uh, it's, we've got it as three here. Uh, what did he mean? Can he explain himself? Let's watch. And we heard you say the Republicans, their, their health care plan is simply they want sick people to, quote, die quickly. Uh, go ahead. Tell us what you mean. Well, what I mean is they've got no plan. It's been 24 hours since I said that. Where is the Republican plan? We're all waiting to see something to take care of people who have pre-existing conditions, to take care of the 47 million people in this country who have no coverage at all. There is no plan. And that's what I meant when I said the Republican plan really is don't get sick. And if you do get sick... Die quickly. But, but you're, you're, Insurance you're, companies you're, like that too. You're saying that Republicans want sick people to die quickly. They you're branding have no all plans. So that's that, that maybe they have no plan. They say they have plenty of plans, but if they uh, they that you you really believe they Republicans want sick people to die quickly. Look, what I want is for us to work together to solve our problems, and I don't see the Republicans doing that. Uh, There's no effort by the Republicans yeah, to actually yeah. pass any kind of bill, has, no bill whatsoever. Just, they just want to stop everything. Has, has any Democratic leader asked you to apologize to no. the Republicans? No. You plan because, on and you know why? You know why they haven't asked me? Because I'm saying what everyone else has been thinking, but no one else has been saying. And, and so you have no intention of apologizing? Of course. The, apologize? You I'm not the one who should be apologizing. They should apologize to America. <laughs> they should apologize to America. Like, apologize? Practice? What are we talking about? Practice? Apologize? No, that's not how I roll. I love it. In the next clip, he's going to talk to Alex Castellanos, who's another conservative strategist. Oh, let's see what happens there. 
I'm a Republican congressman, and I just a question. Which yes. particular Americans do you think I'd like to die? Can you name some? Listen, do you want to make sure that people have affordable, universal, comprehensive health care in this yes, country? Do you? Why, now, way, what have you done about it? Republicans actually have a very different approach than the Democrats do, but it's very concrete. Instead of a big gamble, this one oh, huge plan please. that Obama has, you know, Republicans that's a more supporting nonsense. a very... Five, six, seven Do you really steps think that, all that Republicans tort reform is going to take care of 47 not million people reform, not having, shopping not only nothing? That's shopping what I hear. What is this? Excuse me, shopping across for insurance across state oh, lines is not Oh, and you nothing. really think that that's going to solve people's problems Letting individuals buy the same, have advantages in buying insurance that businesses have is you not know, nothing. You know, that's just helping the nothing. people who give Republicans money. That's what you're doing. What does the insurance companies and everybody else, what that's all you're doing. One at a time. What what a Gloria. Give those trial lawyers, just like you love to do. Uh, Congress let's concentrate on health in this country. Let's concentrate on saving lives and saving money and not the usual cliches. You know another thing I love about this? Uh, Grayson doesn't talks over them, just like uh, the Republicans have done for the last 20, 30 years, right? And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're going to try to bully me? You see what he did at one point? He's like, yeah, <laughs> okay. And he's like, no, here's what's going to happen instead. I'm going to bully you, okay? Man, I love this guy. Uh, I'm thinking of putting him as the four, one of the four horsemen of, of the Democratic Party, okay? Uh, we got a new set of progressives. Okay, here we go. Let's take the fight to him. Now, if you like that, you're going to love this. He's going to bust them out over the head with the Neanderthal line. He's going to talk to Gloria Boge, uh, Borger. Terrible at pronouncing that name. Borger, I think. <laughs> anyway, you'll love this. Let's watch. The Republicans are sort of comparing you to the Joe Wilson situation, the no, congressman. The well, well, how is it not the same? Because I didn't insult the president in front of 40 million people. But you did insult Republicans. Every Republican. No, they what the really Republicans have been doing is an insult to America. But you're They've been dragging their feet. These are, are foot-dragging, knuckle-dragging Neanderthals who think they can dictate policy to America by being stubborn. And I think it's, the time is over. We had an election. That's it. Now we have to move ahead in just the way the president wants but, us to. But this is name, you, I mean, you've just called Republicans Neanderthals. This is the kind of name calling that people were upset at Joe Wilson for doing to the president of the United States. I mean, why is your name calling to all of your Republican colleagues any different from Joe Wilson's? Well, listen, I didn't call names. What I said is true. Mm -hmm. The Republicans no, have nothing even remotely resembling a plan. And when you don't have a plan, what that means is your plan is don't get sick. Should so what I said is true. Should what Joe Wilson said, on the other hand, is false. Should health care be a food fight, though? Or should it be sort of a thoughtful conversation about important Listen, ideas? Listen, I'm new to this, okay? I've only been in Congress now for barely eight months. And I wish when I came to Congress I saw some thoughtful opposition from the other side. But instead, all they do is drag their heels day after day. No, this is great stuff. Again couple more clips. All right, these are just audio, though. He, the, he, Grace will follow it up by saying, I'm coming for you. I'm coming. And then? I'm hunting them down. I'm going to hunt you down. Had enough. It's going to stop. I'm going to attack it. End of this. I keep going all day long. I am going to be the cop that stops it. You're going to get it. <laughs> You're going to get it. And Grace is the guy who's going to give it to you. Now, look, in the middle of that, he said, what? I didn't do any name calling. That's not true. <laughs> yes, he did. He just called them knuckle-dragging Neanderthals. But it's about damn time somebody did, okay? Because that is what they have been for all this time, and the Democrats sit back and take it, and they're polite. And then, but my favorite part of that clip, other than him calling them Neanderthals, is when the guy says, shouldn't this be, you know, a thoughtful discussion rather than a food fight? And Grayson's like, where have you been, man? He's like, ever since I've been here, all it's been is a food fight. Oh, it's been his name calling. And he's 100% right. They hit him with the death panels. They hit him with pulling the plug on grandma. And the list goes on and on. They did it again today. Michelle Bachman did it with the sex clinics. And he says, in the, where, did I miss the intelligent conversation? Where did that happen? Right? So if these are the rules we're playing by, well, you know what? I'm going to suit up. Let's go get him. And are you going to apologize? It was a little bit more high pitched on this one, but this is basically what he had to say. Hell no! <laughs> Hell no! <nah. laughs> All right, man, I can't get enough of this Grayson guy. I can't get enough. All right, I'm going to go to one more clip. Uh, this is uh, clip number six. Let's do it. 
You can what? disagree with the Republicans on health care, and you can say they don't have a plan, and you can say whatever they're trying to do is disrupt the Democrats' efforts to try to get health care reform passed. But to then go one step further and say they want sick people to die quickly, that, that's a huge, huge insult. Well, isn't that exactly what the insurance companies want? But to isn't say they, they, want they want people, sick and people, to die it? quickly. Who is it that are, are inspiring the Republicans to be stubborn this way and to fight every conceivable reform of any kind that's in any not area, that's if not, not the insurance companies? You're, you're accusing the Republicans of supporting death panels now. Am I understanding that correctly? Look, would you support, would you stand with Republicans who want portability? who want to be able to shop across state lines, you know, who, who support honestly, uh, eliminating pre-existing conditions. If you're conditions. the Republican who's in favor of that, you're the only one I've heard of to say that. Well, no, and actually, I deal with them every single day. That's the common Republicans denominator simply, in, all in the House. Republicans. They simply said, no, 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 So you no, would. No, so you're no. saying you would if That's Republicans come That's the Democratic plan. What about what a you senator just described like a Democratic plan? Do you, you think you can steal the emperor's will. clothes that way? Congressman, oh, with actually the Republican approach. By the way, the insurance companies support that. Did you, what did, how did you react when Sarah Palin, the former governor of Alaska, the Republican vice presidential nominee, accused Democrats and the president of the United States of wanting to create death panels? How did I react? I said to myself, I wish Sarah Palin read the bill. Because that's not what this bill says. The Democratic bill doesn't do anything even approaching that. That's a scare tactic. What I said, on the other hand, is the God's honest truth. And truth is an absolute defense. <laughs> uh, he's not backing down an inch. So now, an interesting thing happened there, okay? Do you see how he shifted the debate? All of a sudden, when he talked about how the Republicans want people to die, right? Then they had to bring out all the times the Republicans talked about how the Democrats want people to die. The death panels, the Sarah Palin, etc. And then all of a sudden, the Republicans are on defense. And then, for the first time I've seen on television, a Republican actually, Castellanos, the Republican strategist, actually suggested something substantive. Why? Because he got put on the defense. And he's like, well, what do you mean we don't say anything substantive? No, 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 we have something substantive. Uh, portability. We can get, take insurance across state lines. And you know what the really funny thing is? That's not a bad point. It, we'll talk about that more on the show later. But uh, that proposal is not a bad proposal, which is that, hey, instead of limiting all the insurance to uh, to just state by state, that you get rid of the state lines and let all the insurance compete in all the different areas, that would bring us more competitiveness. Great. Now, Grayson says that's a Democratic proposal. To be fair to the Republicans, I did hear that from some Republicans in the Senate side. Okay? Fantastic. If, if the result of Grayson calling out the Republicans is for the Republicans to actually do substantive proposals, <laughs> my God, he, he'd have accomplished something bigger than I imagined. So he's got the Republicans playing defense, and most importantly, they've changed the conversation, okay? They've changed the conversation from what's wrong with the Democratic plan to what's wrong with the Republicans who don't want to help people and who are letting them die. That's what I'm talking about. That's how you frame an issue. All of a sudden, the question isn't what's wrong with the Democratic plan. The question is what's wrong with the Republicans? Why don't they want to help people? And the question is more important than the answer. Alan Grayson, booyah kasha. You can tell I'm excited. Like <laughs> was on the streets trying to consume some skirts for the E so I can get some phones rolling in my ride, chilling all alone. Just hit the east side of the LBC. Back on the Young Turks, it is underrated how much I love that song. And when I think of regulators, that's what I think. Regulators, it's time to ride. And uh, apparently, one of our top regulators is named Alan Grayson. All right, now uh, we are going to go to a different issue where the Republicans have brought out their smear machine again and again and again. We're going to talk to Carl Frisch from Media Matters about the smearing of Kevin Jennings. Uh, Carl, welcome to the Young Turks. Thanks for having me. Let me ride. <laughs> there you go. That's I'm not to... paid for my singing. <laughs> <laughs> Nonetheless, nicely done. Thank you. All right, uh, let's start about, uh, first, who's Carl Jennings, and, and secondly, uh, what is it that he is being charged with from the right? Well, if you listen to uh, Fox News, uh, Kevin Jennings is a scary czar, uh, which is scary because uh, I guess uh, it sounds like commie talk, um, and that frightens the bejesus out of uh, the Fox News folks. In reality, he's, he's like a deputy uh, secretary of education who focuses on uh, school violence and, and drugs. Um, and uh, so 
that's who he is, and uh, the the whole story um, has been swirling around for months, and it's just now getting legs in the conservative media. And what is it that they're going after him for? I mean, there, I know there's a couple of different strands here, but let's start with the claims of statutory uh, allowing statutory of rape without reporting. And what well, what are they referring to? In 2004, Jennings wrote a book, uh, kind of biography, really, uh, about his experience as a closeted and then openly gay teacher. Um, and this is in Massachusetts. And 21 years ago, when he was 24, I guess this is like 1988, uh, a student uh, came to him uh, and told him that he was in a uh, gay relationship with an older man. Now, the student was 16 years old at the time, and according to Massachusetts law, that's the age of consent. So there was no law broken. Um, uh, Jennings now says that he wished he would have handled it differently, uh, which is fine. Uh, but the way that the conservative media has been portraying this is, is all kinds of unhinged craziness. Um, whether they've been describing Jennings and, and his background as being a homosexual activist or somebody who's been trying to, you know, employ the homosexual agenda, uh, or being a radical homosexual, or wanting to promote homosexuality in schools. I don't know how you do that in schools. Um, I don't know if you give away, like, Starbucks coupons or something. Uh, <laughs> I, I didn't know that that was particularly homosexual, I have to admit. <laughs> yeah, well, either did I. I'm just trying to think of what the promotion might uh, maybe be. Maybe a latte for a latte. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a nice soy chai latte. Okay, now, uh, but Carl, look, there's a, there seems to be some sort of dispute as to whether the kid was 15 or 16. What, what's that all about, and how do you know that he's 16 as opposed to 15 at the time? Well, you've got, uh, in his book, uh, he talks about him being 16 in previous remarks he's been 16, and uh, a letter from an attorney for GLSEN, uh, the Gay and Lesbian Straight Education Network, identify the kid as 16. Uh, let's make no mistake, the kid was young and, and the adult was older, uh, and uh, even Jennings himself says that he wish he would have handled the situation differently. Uh, but let's be clear, this is not <clears throat> a campaign against Jennings based on this incident. Uh, the Family Research Council, a virulently anti-gay organization, has been going after Jennings since he was appointed before any of this was even known, uh, you know, uh, again, calling him a radical homosexual who's trying to implement the homosexual agenda um, and, uh, and so on, uh, all the stuff that we're used to hearing from the right about gay people. You know, I also read an interesting blog from John Arvosis about this at America Blog, and he said uh, he doesn't understand what the conservatives or the media wanted Jennings to do, which is an, he made an interesting point that I hadn't thought of. He said, look, if you go and tell everybody about this, so what's going to happen is you're going to out the kid without asking him or uh, getting him involved. And at that point, he appears, to, he appears to be 16 years old, of legal age of consent, so there is no legal issue. And then you go tell the school, the community, his parents, hey, everybody, your son is gay, your son is gay. And I'm not sure that is the right way to handle it. No, that's exactly what they want, though. I mean, to, to play it forward, play the tape forward, uh, these are people who are completely opposed to any kind of programs to combat bullying in schools. Uh, and really leading the fight against bullying in schools uh, have been various gay civil rights organizations because, you know, you take polls of kids in school today, uh, particularly the gay kids, they're taunted with gay epithets every single day. Uh, and it's only once every couple weeks we hear about either a kid taking his own life uh, or, or being the victim of savage bullying in schools. Uh, so uh, the right doesn't want anybody to protect uh, gay kids from being bullied. Uh, I have no doubt that they probably wanted this kid to be outed uh, to his peers. Uh, many of these right-wing nut jobs actually think that bullying will stiffen him up and make him a better man. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that's where it stems from. And to watch the folks at Fox News and on conservative talk radio and on the conservative blogs, they're all parodying the talking points of the Family Research Council. Uh, this is just an extension of the witch hunt that Fox News has been conducting against various members of the Obama administration. All right, so let me ask you this. this uh, I, uh, the, you know, before I get to the last part of this, you, know, you just mentioned the Obama administration. Are they at all aware of what's happening here? Do they get that once they fired Van Jones that this was going to happen to... Uh, dozens of people within the administration that every single thing that they had ever written or said was going to be culled and then if anything that was could be interpreted or twisted into something slightly you know uh, 
wrong was going to get blown up by Fox News day after day after day. Are they not aware of this, and, and do they have any plan to combat it, or are they just going to keep going, oh, no, don't do that, okay, we fire him, and then we fire him, and then we fire him. Who else would you like me to fire, Sean Hannity? Are you really saying that Fox News didn't have its appetite satiated with just one firing? <laughs> if anything, as you and I know, of course, and everybody listening knows, it whetted their appetite. Of course. Uh, this is like catnip to a giant, ferocious, paranoid, delusional cat. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, it doesn't look like the administration's backing down on this one, which is progress. Uh, Secretary of Education Arne Duncan has come out in support of him, uh, and the administration has indicated that it's not backing down. Uh, but, you know, that's how it started with Van Jones. So it, it remains to be seen. But this is not even the only person on, on the docket for the right. They're going after Haldren. They're going after uh, Cass Sustain. They're going after numerous people in the administration. Uh, so... You know, while they're not busy focused on, on how evil the Olympics are, uh, they're, they're focused on individual members of the administration. Uh, and uh, what we've learned uh, is that anybody with more than one word in their title in the administration is supposedly a czar, and uh, it's time to purge the administration of its czars. Hey, Suze, do you have that clip of Hannity? I just want to play the beginning of this clip so you, people get a sense of what's going to happen going forward. This is about Jennings. Watch. I want him fired. I think he's you know. inappropriate. I think anybody that, that has that kind of judgment does not belong to be the safe school czar. Am I, am I out of, you, you're, you're mm. equivocating. All right, yeah, that's, just, that's good enough for now. Well, and you know what's funny about that is that Sean Hannity and a bunch of folks at Fox during the, uh, the Mark Foley scandal, uh, you know, we all remember the congressman who was sending lewd messages to, to pages, uh, during that scandal, when it became clear that Speaker of the House, then Speaker of the House, Denny Haster, knew about these messages and did nothing about it, uh, Sean Hannity and the folks at Fox, Sean Hannity in particular, came to Haster's defense. So uh, apparently, um, if, if you do cover up something um, and you happen to be a Republican elected official, you cover up something that's just horrible like what Foley did, that's okay, and that's defensible. But if you uh, are a teacher uh, and you counsel a student in something like this, you don't break any laws, and you don't try and hide it because it's actually part of your autobiography, uh, that's a fireable offense. And by the way, just to be clear, too, uh, what Jennings did not talk about, the thing that he knew about, was consensual, right? Where, right. Whereas what Foley did was not consensual. He would send, and he had position of power over those kids. He'd send these kids that had no idea what was coming uh, messages about how he dropped his pants and gone to work. And, there's and that's what has to covered up. <laughs> there's reason to believe that, uh, that uh, the speaker knew that Foley was showing up drunk at the page house. So, uh, yeah, uh, there's a big difference here. Right. Uh, and we also have to remember what it was like in 1988. Uh, it is not the same world 21 years ago that it is today. Uh, it was even harder for students to come out. At the time, Jennings himself was a closeted teacher. And in the 80s, Christian groups were not just fighting about gay marriage. This shows you the progress that's been made. They were fighting to fire teachers who were gay. Uh, that's so right. That's the world in which this incident happened. All right, Carl Frisch from Media Matters. Thanks so much for joining us on the Young Turks. Thanks for having me. All right, Young Turks, we'll be back.